small cell lung cancer, or SCLC, is a highly aggressive lung cancer notorious for the tendency to spread quickly and metastasize early. Yeah, and because of that fact, it's often not diagnosed until the advanced stages, which results in significant challenges in the treatment and management of the disease. Although some recent advances have been made, the prognosis of SCLC remains dismal, making the need for research and clinical trials for effective treatments more critical than ever. Small cell lung cancer comprises 15% of all lung cancers. Due to how quickly it spreads, approximately 70% of patients present with extensive stage small cell lung cancer disease. Unfortunately, due to the aggressive nature of small cell lung cancer, most patients are seen by an oncologist after the cancer has spread extensively and are suffering from symptoms, the most common including cough and shortness of breath. Patients may also experience coughing up blood, trouble swallowing, and even weight loss. Smoking is a major risk factor for small cell lung cancer. Other notable risk factors of developing small cell lung cancer include exposure to chemicals such as asbestos, exposure to radiation from sources such as radiation therapy in the breast or chest, or radon in the home or workplace. When a patient comes to me, with symptoms that are suggestive of lung cancers, I perform a series of tests and procedures to diagnose small cell lung cancer. If the imaging suggests a possible tumor in the lung, the next step is a biopsy. It's important to remember that even though we may have a suspicion for cancer, we cannot tell a patient that they actually have cancer until they have a biopsy proven result of cancer. Once the lung cancer is found, it's important to determine whether the cancer is at limited stage or extensive stage. Limited stage cancer, which is potentially curable, is treated with various standard of care modalities such as chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. Extensive stage cancer is incurable, and chemotherapies are used to improve and prolong survival. Unfortunately, while most small cell lung cancer patients have an initial response, the majority recur and have resistant disease. When a patient has resistant disease, there are very few treatment options for them at this point. Clinical trials can help fill this void by finding the new and better treatments for small cell lung cancer. When we come back, the emerging clinical trial landscape designed to meet the unmet needs in small cell lung cancer. We'll be right back. Until recently, the treatment landscape for small cell lung cancer has had a very limited collection of effective treatments. Currently, there are emerging strategies and recent clinical trial efforts focusing on exploring combination therapies to improve outcomes for small cell lung cancer patients. One such clinical trial through a partnership with Fosin Pharmaceuticals and Henlius is a randomized open-label study of surplulimab plus chemotherapy compared with the standard of care atezolizumab plus chemotherapy in previously untreated patients with extensive stage small cell lung cancer in the United States. Having benefited from thousands of Chinese patients and based on the promising results so far, the treatment was granted orphan drug designation by the FDA and the European Commission for the Treatment of SCLC. While these advancements in the treatment of small cell lung cancer have moved the needle forward, another significant challenge persists. How to ensure diverse representation within these trials? And it's our job to try to make sure that everybody, regardless of their economic status, their racial background, their gender, has access uh, to quality medical care. So we have to reduce the gap between those who have adequate medical care and those that don't 
I don't want patients due to a lack of insurance, lack of transportation, the color of their skin, their gender, their sexual orientation, to not have access to these clinical trials. Not all people respond to medications the same way. Say, for example, African Americans may not respond to a certain high blood pressure medication um, compared to the general population. So it's important to include everybody so you can find out exactly if this medication is going to work, and if not, why. So the next step is the tailor a trial that includes everybody with these questions in mind. Increasing levels of trust and awareness within diverse communities has become a major goal of the Astride trial. Unfortunately, throughout our history, certain populations were mistreated, not only by the medical profession, also by clinical researchers. Uh, we all know about the untreated syphilis trial in Alabama, and it's a fallout from that. Um, unfortunately, there's a mistrust in the medical system due to these instances, and unfortunately, that mistrust spans generations where we are now, but we have to break down these barriers to allow patients to get on these clinical trials. The only way we can do that is to regain that trust. It's been proven that if I ask an African-American patient to go on a clinical trial, they're more than likely to say yes because we have the same cultural background, understand historical references, and they understand that I will not do anything to them that I wouldn't do to my own parents. It's important that we in, you know, ensure that the next generation of clinical trialists and the physicians and scientists um, look like the general population. The reason Estrada is important is because, you know, they're opening up clinical research sites, um, not only in academic facilities where a lot of clinical trials are performed, but in community settings where the patients are. But particularly, there's gonna be a real emphasis on enrolling patients who are generally underrepresented in clinical trials historically, specifically African-Americans and Hispanic. But we need that data to ensure that this medication is gonna work in all populations. That's why I got into medicine. I'm passionate about ensuring that people live longer. That means everyone, not a small population. Cancer does not discriminate. This distinctive focus also extends to an emphasis on the exclusive enrollment of Asian American Pacific Islanders. The Astride trial is not only a model for change in the clinical trial landscape, but it also stands as a beacon of hope for small cell lung cancer patients. For most patients, they typically will ask, what do you have for me? You know, what type of treatments are there? I am very excited to speak with them about a clinical trial, to teach them about the opportunity that they have to enroll and be part of something bigger than themselves that in the short term may help them, but then may also extend the lives of others. It offers hope for a disease that is typically hopeless. I feel very honored to be able to tell them that they aren't alone. And for more information on the Astride Clinical Trial discussed today, visit smallcelllungcancertrial.com. And as always, you can go up to our website, thebalancingact.com, for more. We'll be back right after this.